um, and um, lack of uh, serious or uh, linguistics to direct my teaching. Okay, okay, fine, fair enough. Okay. Uh, then we have Sumon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Sumo. You can call me Sumo. I'm okay. from Mandalay, which is a residential area in Myanmar. I've got two academic degrees from Yadanawa University, such as BA Honors MA, majoring in English. Uh, now, uh, I have a special focus for uh, English language teaching approaches, especially mm -hmm. communicative language teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, I have been teaching for uh, for at least ten years. Okay, good. Uh, once again, you know, communicative language teaching uh, it it kind of developed after nineteen seventies, uh, but I honestly feel that uh, it has not been established in different countries of the world. You know, it has remained a theory, and ultimately, I would say that if a theory is implemented, it is brought in practice. Only then uh, we would say that it's the, the advantage of uh, the theory. So all said and done, you know, to give you an example in a country like India, which is so highly populated in every class, we have like 150 students uh, sitting in every lecture. Uh, it's a challenge to improve the speaking skill of every individual student. And we need to think of how communicative language teaching approach could be implemented in large classes in classes with mixed abilities, I think there is a lot of room and scope. Though some work has been done on this field, I personally believe a lot has to be done because uh, students are not able to exhibit that kind of linguistic competence even after their graduation. And uh, everybody needs English, right? It's not just for English major students, but somebody who becomes a doctor, a consultant, a counselor, works in media. I think everybody has to become competent in communication. So. I'm sure uh, we will come up with uh, some more ideas uh, during these two sessions. Thank you, Sumon, and all the best. Uh, Rosamon. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Professor, uh, I'm Rosamon Pandongam. You can call me easier, uh, May Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, I graduated from uh, Thai University, both in BA Bachelor of Art in majoring of a business English program mm -hmm. and for master degree, uh, I got the communicative English program. Mm -hmm. So um, I interested in business administration area and ESP mm -hmm. and English literature as well. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, I uh, right now I'm a business English lecturer at Buriam Lachapat University and also um, director of international relation office in Buriam Lachapat University as well. Um, oh. For my uh, field that I think that I like to do is um, improving speaking ability or communicative competence for BRU students and BRU personal staff. Yes, mm -hmm. that's my interest that in. Great, great. Thank I you. think I think you are a multitasker doing a lot of things simultaneously <laughs> and effectively. Yeah, Very good. Of course. <laughs> yeah. We not not only me, other other lecturers as well. Yeah. Right from Dr. Akarapon to the last person in the <laughs> university, I'm sure. Uh, so very interesting, Rosamon. Uh, again, I'll speak about this, uh, you know, very recently, uh, I'm in the process of designing a course where uh, we have selected certain literary texts, okay, related to business, that is some aspect of business comes in these literary texts. And uh, this can improve the speaking skill of uh, people and business professionals. Uh, because all said and done, we understand that literature provides a very a valuable context to learning. You know, we can't teach language always in isolation. So, uh, for example, if we take a, take a Shakespearean play like Merchant of Venice, right, it talks about business. So how we can bring this in. So I think it's a very, very interesting area of research. And also, if you wish to do something like uh, English for management professionals, English for bank managers, English for business professionals. So we will be again talking about this. 
uh, very good. And I look forward to reading your PhD thesis. I'm really interested in this area. Thank so you. I, I hope you complete it within the stipulated time given by your honorable guide and uh, wish you all the best. Yes. All right. Is anyone uh, Than? Is he or she a student or a faculty? I'm not sure. Is I can see one name here, Than Than Win. Is he a student? Uh, for PhD students uh, now, oh, you mentioned already. Okay, so it's done, right, everyone? Uh, another one, it's our staff, our uh, attendants from, from. Okay. Yes, from Myanmar as well. From, uh, uh, because I can see two names, A A. Yes, A A, -A Ma from, okay. from Myanmar and Tan Tan Win okay. as well from Myanmar. Okay. Uh, so they, they want to speak or what is it, Kumpi? Or uh, I am a, I I am a, can you can you turn on your yes, 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 yes. thank you. I am a, you can talk to the professor, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, Professor. I'm Emma from Yama, and I just the participants of this webinar. I'm not a PhD scholar at this point. Yes. Good. You are already preparing. You are preparing in advance for PhD, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank yes. Uh, I have decided if I have a chance to pursue my PhD, I will do it exactly, Professor. <laughs> yes. I'm just learning for my PhD, and I just trying. I'm just trying to, to participate. And okay. uh, I joined this webinar because I want to learn from you. Yes, thank you, okay. Teacher. Okay, are you teaching somewhere? Are you, te are you a teacher? Uh, yes, right now, yes, right now I'm English language teacher and my position is a tutor at Pamo University under the supervision of Ministry of Education in Myanmar. Yes, Teacher. Okay, okay, great, good. Fine, thank you. Yes, thank you thank very you. much. Uh, thank you everyone, in fact. Uh, now I know that uh, under ELT, it's good that all of you kind of know, you know, what is it and what is that area where you need to work. Uh, of course, we need to give a shape to your topic and we can think of uh, the present research in ELT and uh, how you can shape it, how you can modify it because you are still at the foundational stage of your research. So uh, it's very clear that all of you uh, have interest in ELT where you're going to work either on vocabulary, grammar, uh, TESOL, error analysis, English for special purposes, uh, the speaking skill, uh, applied linguistics. So, you know, all this clearly comes under the purview of ELT. All right, so thank you very much. And during these next two sessions, uh, I will certainly try to relate whatever I'm going to say now to the topics that you have told me so that you start gaining some ideas. And as I said, if you have any questions, uh, any doubt, uh, please feel free to participate. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. So just give me a minute. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Yeah. Yes, Dr. Kampi, is the screen visible? Yes, yes, you can see now. Right. Okay. So, uh, excuse me, uh, Ajahn Montana, whenever uh, Professor asking us, uh, just would like the MC to respond her immediately. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. You would like, you, you like to have everything go smoothly. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right. So uh, since I've been given this topic where I have to relate linguistics and talk about ELT, TFEL, TESOL, and of course, areas uh, related to ELT in research. Uh, before we move ahead, uh, I want you to think of these two words and two very important words. One is teaching and the second is learning. Now, you know, logically, uh, we would feel and we think that wherever there is teaching or whenever there is teaching, there is always learning, right? So when a teacher teaches something, learnings should essentially happen. 
but my question to you is uh, do you think that every time whenever there is teaching learning essentially takes place uh, sumon what do you think yes i think so uh, professor because uh, if you want to teach the students we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to know all the subject matter very well so we have to and then uh, we then uh, to uh, to be able to uh, transfer my our knowledge to the students we have to read that's why at the same time mm -hmm. uh, when whenever we teach so we learn uh, yeah no now uh, see sumon my question is i'm not saying uh, whether a teacher should have knowledge certainly the teacher should have knowledge right my question is that now don't think of one country one college one situation okay i'm talking about the teaching of english at the global level at the level of the entire world and uh, i feel that you know every time whenever teaching happens teaching of english happens essentially learning does not happen right now that could be maybe because the methods of teaching are not so correct or appropriate uh, another reason could be the learners are very casual right so there could be many many reasons for why learning doesn't happen uh, to give you one example uh, in india for example we start teaching english at standard first level which means the child starts learning english at the age of 6 and the child learns english till he or she graduates which means he learns for 15 long years right uh, in thailand or in myanmar at what age do you start learning english uh, maybe maybe 3 years old as a kindergarten okay kindergarten and i'm sure yeah. they they continue learning english till graduation right right yes. now now yes. can, now you tell me that if you look at the competence of english in your country either in thailand or in myanmar do you think everybody speaks english very well no no no, no. right right that is exactly no. my question so a lot of teaching of english happens right right from kindergarten to the post graduation right as we say from kg to pg we teach a lot of english but then if people are not able to communicate, it means that something is going wrong, uh, either in the teacher's attitude, teacher's psychology, teacher's approach, teacher's method. You know, we, we need to think about it. That is the point. The second important word, of course, is the word uh, learning. Uh, Vanchana, uh, how would you define learning? Uh, learning, in my point of view, is um the way to receive uh, kind of knowledge from a teacher or some mm -hmm. person who give you the knowledge and you have to uh, find out which one that suit you that you can learn as much as possible mm -hmm. all right That's would it. okay would someone like to add something to this what is your definition of learning Yes, yeah, sure. I think it's more about changing the input into like intake. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes things that we learn in class, I mean, we not get everything, but in the process that we learn, we may, uh, when, when we can remember, we know how to use it, we know how to apply it, then it becomes um, intake, things mm -hmm. that we learn. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, fine, good. Thank you, Piachat. Certainly there is intake and there is a change and the process of change that one is able to perceive, right? Uh, let us just write two very short definitions of each of these terms. I want you to take it down. Uh, teaching, please write it down. Teaching. Is something. that takes place <coughs> something that takes place in an organized manner something that takes place in an organized manner 
for predetermined for predetermined learning outcomes for predetermined learning outcomes and and it is based on curriculum full stop learning can be understood learning can be understood as a process of change learning can be understood as a process of change or transformation learning can be understood as a process of change or transformation okay um uh, in my next session also i'm going to say something uh, in a greater detail about these words but just because we are venturing into elt and these topics uh, remember for the word teaching i think the word organization organizational sense is very very important right so teaching is something that takes place in an organized manner i might be highly knowledgeable but uh, if i'm not organized enough i don't think my lecture is going to have an impact right uh, let me ask you this question uh, for a teacher both the aspects of knowledge and the aspect of skill are important which one do you think is more important uh, on siri what do you think what, what is more important for a teacher okay, is it not um, at my point i think uh, the the first thing that the course or a teacher should be aims at like um english knowledge right mm -hmm. because um if we have a great knowledge we can share to our class right and when when uh, when we share and then our class can gain uh mm -hmm. or enhanced their english skills thank okay. you correct on siri i agree with you uh, just a question is that if i am a highly knowledgeable teacher yes. okay but i am not very skillful i don't put my ideas in such a way that every student of my class will get the point my methods are not correct do you think i will be a good teacher i have knowledge but i don't have skill um i i think um absolutely be a good teacher but i'm not be a great or best teacher because um if i want to be the best one i have to have both paths the, the first Absolutely. one is the best knowledge and the best skills right right absolutely well said so one might become a teacher one but one may not become a great teacher if yes. one doesn't have uh, the aspect of skill so teaching is something that takes place in an organized manner let us try to have that organizational skill which is based uh where we also think of predetermined learning outcomes as a teacher i think we have to know what my outcome is going to be what my result is going to be so that accordingly i can prepare for my class if i don't know as somebody took the word intake or input you know we give some input but we also expect the output for example if i try to teach communication to my school children but at the end of the year they don't speak at all i think it's my failure as a teacher right so our learning outcomes have to be very clear so it is based on predetermined pre meaning before it is based on uh, the learning outcomes in on the basis of curriculum i think uh, arriving uh, at the right kind of curriculum at the right kind of design uh, also is a very important aspect of teaching coming to learning in one sin there could be 100 definitions of the word learning but what we have said right now is that every act of learning has to be some kind of change or transformation 
if there is no change uh, friends uh, look at your countries look at thailand or myanmar or india i would say there are uh, some 30 to 40% students who are taught english but they don't learn it for whatsoever reason you know let us not go into all those reasons right now so uh, if that student hardly learns english in all these to 10 years or 15 years it means that there was not much change in him right so we our system has not been able to achieve that transformation do you agree with me therefore i asked you this question that there is teaching happening there is teaching of english happening but essentially everybody is not learning english yes, i agree you... with you Ajahn. i agree uh, i would like to share my thought that are uh, in my yeah. ideas right <laughs> teachings mean input right but mm. learning uh, means output right Correct. absolutely yes input and output Output. Yes. So, you know, it's like uh, people that the learner has to become independent. For example, all of us uh, learn to ride a bicycle, maybe when we were five years old or six years old, our mom or our dad was holding the bicycle, right? At some point of time, they started leaving us without informing us. Maybe we fell down, right? Error analysis, right? So we, we, we do something. And the moment we do something, errors become a part of it. But finally, we started riding the bicycle very well. So this is a change. This is a transformation. So any and every act of learning should be able to show that change. And I would say uh, this is a very important part of ELT and would be a very important part uh, on the part of the teacher if we are able to bring a change in our learners. If we are bring, able to bring a change in the total standard of English in our country. Just excuse me. <coughs> All right. Uh, any question about these two words? Uh, we will be talking more about them uh, as I move ahead with the slides. But I just thought that this would be an introduction to what we are going to say. Uh, we need to understand what teaching is and what learning is. Any question before I move ahead? No. Yeah, okay. Fine. <clears throat> uh, let me say something about characteristics of effective teaching. Number one, I would say it is very, very important that every teacher has passion for teaching. Passion is deep love for teaching. So uh, teachers should become teachers by choice and not teachers by accident. You understand what I mean? If, if I become a teacher of English by accident, there will be accidents for the children, for my students. But if I have become a teacher by choice, if I'm passionate about it, if I love teaching, I think uh, I will care for my students. I want to bring a change in my students. So it's very important that we have passion. Uh, I already talked about this point that uh, we must be willing to bring some kind of transformation in the learner. Uh, I think the role of teacher as a psychologist is extremely important. Uh, I think uh, Vanchana, who said that he would, he would be willing to work on uh, teaching of vocabulary, or Tatya, who said she wants to work with speaking skill, or Piyachat, who sh said she wants to work with speaking skill. Uh, remember, apart from, your, apart from the module that you will create, you will also have to be a friend to your students to teach, their, to teach them speaking skill and develop word power. Because with speaking skill or with word power and vocabulary, as you know, uh, quite often learners carry a lot of phobia, fear. You know this word? Phobia, P-H-O-B-I-A. They carry a lot of phobia in their mind. And so you have to give them a supporting hand as a teacher. You have to play the role of a psychologist, as a consultant, as a counselor, and therefore it's a very, very challenging job. So uh, I think every teacher should make an attempt uh, to work as a psychologist. Another important characteristic feature is that we must have a knowledge of as many methods as possible. Now, 
having knowledge doesn't mean that each and every method we are going to bring in in each and every classroom right that's not possible sometimes we combine methods sometimes you know what is called as the eclectic approach do you know this word eclectic e c l e e c l e c t i c eclectic means to combine the best of all so uh, for example uh, sumon uh, you mentioned to me that you are interested in uh, clt in communicative language teaching and uh, now as you know actually it's a broader term in fact some people say clt is not a method it is an approach and under that approach you might have to combine a number of methods for example task based method uh, you might want to think about suggestopedia do you know suggestopedia which incorporates music in language teaching uh you may want to think of uh, what is called as a silent method that the teacher remains silent but through actions uh, she motivates uh, students to communicate so uh, that could be another method uh you may want to integrate uh, multiple intelligence theories to communicate to make and help the learners communicate so uh, it is very very important that every teacher has a knowledge of effective methods as many methods as possible okay and i'm sure as you go on reading ahead uh, you will understand those methods so every good teacher uh, essentially knows a number of methods and the last of course important point is that as a teacher of english i think we need to have excellent communication skills and there also comes the aspect of skill that uh, remember all said and done our students imitate the teacher right they imitate the teacher and therefore if the teacher's pronunciation is wrong or if the teacher doesn't know the grammatical structure well uh, this can lead to problems on the part of the learner so it is our moral responsibility uh, that we are able to exhibit good communication skills all right so this is what i would say that effective teaching now these are few points i know but uh, these are the most important ones for me so the teacher should be passionate the teacher should be willing to bring change in the learner the teacher's job is a very difficult job it's a very challenging job uh, because the teacher has to play the role uh, multiple roles i would say and one very important role uh, is the role of a psychologist a friend a consultant a researcher a time manager a uh, motivator so i think these multi playing these multiple roles is a very difficult task also a teacher should have knowledge of different language teaching methods and literature teaching methods and the teacher should have good communication skills okay can i move ahead any question okay i think there is no question madam okay okay so uh, as i said don't hesitate to ask questions i am not a dangerous person at all right so you can ask me you can just unmute yourself and ask me questions at any point of time all right so we move ahead with two prominent theories of language learning now this is how linguistics and elt come together the topic given to me is how some of the concepts and notions in linguistics uh, can be useful for uh, elt purpose now uh, remember these two approaches uh, actually come from psychology okay uh, initially behavioristic approach was very popular but then after 1960s or so the cognitivistic approach uh, became very popular uh, does anyone know anything about behaviorism or what is behavioristic approach any idea yes rosemon you want to say something
uh, in my opinion, for behavioristic approach mean that uh, it's like uh, uh, how to the learners act in the classroom. Mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not sure that I'm right or wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. And yeah. what do you, what do you think the cognitivistic approach is about? Cognitive is like about the thinking, right? Thinking about the uh, uh, that thought in learning of language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Your uh, your answer is correct as far as cognitivism is concerned. Not quite right as far as behaviorism <laughs> is concerned. But we will uh, talk about it. No problem. Uh, <clears throat> let me first talk about the importance of behaviorism. Now, um, you know, in, in psychology and later linguists also studied, uh, you must be familiar with this experiment uh, that was carried on a dog by a very well-known psychologist named Pavlov. Do you know this name? Pavlov, P-A-V-L-O-V, P-A-V-L-O-V. Uh, what Pavlov did was uh, he uh, gave food to the dog. Okay, so food operates as a stimulus, you know, something that leads to learning. So when Pavlov gave food to dog, uh, obviously the dog started salivating, you know, salivation. There is saliva in the mouth. Next step, every time he gave food to the dog, he rang the bell. Clear? Every time he gave food to the dog, the master rang the bell. Time came when once the master only rang the bell, the master did not give any food, but still there was salivation. Okay. Now this is how uh, if something becomes a part of our habit formation, we learn. That is what behaviorists have to say. So what do behaviorists emphasize on? They emphasize on the importance of stimulus. Okay, so stimulus in our situation, in case of teaching learning situation, would be something that leads to learning. Now, uh, for example, in the classroom, I would say teacher is a very important stimulus. Because of teacher, the learning happens. For example, if I go to the class and I say, uh, today we are going to study a very difficult poem. Now, even if the poem is difficult, I think I should not announce that it is a difficult poem, right? I'm not a good stimulus if I say that because my job as a teacher is to simplify if at all the things are difficult, right? So teacher has to operate as effective stimulus. Now in the classroom, can you tell me what are the other stimuli that lead to learning? Apart from the teacher, what else can we use? What else can we do so that learning happens and, and, and the learners are motivated to learn? Excuse me, can I try? Yes. Okay, in our class, I think uh, we can just like games, Ajahn, game. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think games that they love, like um, for the games we use in the class can push or can, um, I mean, uh, enhance their uh, it is skills, right? mm -hmm. games, games, right. yes. Right, so just as a teacher, I would say, as, as Rosmon has said, a game can operate as a stimulus. Anything else, Sumon? Please unmute yourself, Sumon. Yeah. yeah. What, for example, you know, we pay, play a game and game operates as a stimulus. What else can operate as a stimulus in the classroom? Um, if, the, uh, if the students can uh, uh, connect something, so we give, uh, well, we give uh, something they want as re reward. Uh, okay, so a reward can be a stimulus because that can motivate to learn. Okay, fine. One channel. Uh, for me, uh, like an uh, extra point, ex extra point can be um something that stimulates, um or, or or encourage them. 
how what else can operate as stimulus to make them learn mm, uh, doing some activity and provide okay. some extra point um, to uh, for them okay. maybe can do individual or the group work mm -hmm. right right now uh, i think some of you um, i think again it is sumon who talked about clt Piachet, who talked about task-based activities, I would suggest that in your research, please try to bring collaborative learning. You know this term, collaborative learning, because as Vanchana said, uh, they, they can sit together, they can work in groups, right? Some of our learners have uh, what are called as interpersonal skills, right? That alone, they don't work well, but if you put them in a group, they will work well. Uh, for example, Pia Chat, can you just unmute yourself for a minute? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Pia Chat, I was go just going to suggest that when you work with speaking skill, uh, for example, uh, because students carry a lot of fear in their mind, if you try to work with collaborative learning, you know, design some modules so that they sit in a group, they start talking, they work in chorus, and then you help them and motivate them to work individually. I think uh, that technique will help you in your research. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, Rosemon, uh, you said uh, if in case you happen to work with speaking ability and uh, the business professionals or business administrators, you know, quite often uh, what I have seen is that they are good at formal speech they are good at formal writing they can write letters well they can write emails well but then they are not so good in informal communication so this business professional if you ask him to write a letter he may write it pretty well but ask that business professional to introduce someone in a meeting he may not be able to do it that great so once again, if you can bring in some activities and collaborative learning activities, uh, that can help uh, a lot, okay? So uh, fine, so uh, a lot of activities can operate as stimulus. For example, you motivate them to watch a film. I would say a film is a stimulus. Film helps to learn, right? Or as uh, Sumon said, if I say, well done, if I say, keep it up, very good, Right, so reward always doesn't mean a chocolate. Even your words could be a reward for the learner. Then behavioristic approach also emphasized the role of repetition and drilling. Behaviorists believe that if we repeat, we learn. If there is drilling, we learn. To give you one example, uh, all of us have learned our tables in mathematics through repetition, right? We learn the past tense and the past participle form of the verb through repetition. For example, go, went, gone, think, thought, thought, right? So somewhere repetition can be useful and behaviorism focused a lot on repetition. Uh, behaviorism also focused uh, and believed that both reward and punishment uh, are important in learning. Uh, Wang Gui. If I'm correctly pronouncing your name, are you there? You mean Bang Ili, right? Bang, Bang Ili, yes. Okay. Yeah. Bang Ili, yeah. Ah, sorry. How do you pronounce your name, dear? Uh, you can call me Ili. Ili. Okay. She's a good teacher. She's simplifying things for me, right? <laughs> okay. Ili. Uh, can you tell me, do you think uh, punishment is important in learning? About uh, <clears throat> repetition and drilling? No, the third point, reward and punishment. Do you think giving reward rewards? And punishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, maybe, maybe in the English class, if the students did well, and uh, I will just uh, praise them and to, to make them uh, have the confid confidence and uh, maybe if uh, if they just make some mistakes and sometimes we can just uh, uh, punish punish them but not severely just uh, uh, just make them to realize the mistake they have made okay understand 
right right do you others yeah. do you agree with her yes pardon yeah yes i think others we we we, we do agree with what she said right that reward is important punishment can also work but it should not be a serious punishment it should not be corporal punishment right so uh, both these aspects were emphasized by behaviorists and behaviorists uh, felt that both reward and punishment can contribute to the process of learning they also believed that imitation plays a very significant role in learning they believed that we look at others and we learn uh for example uh, quite often a baby a 6 month old baby who cannot even speak but the baby is looking at the family members and picking up a lot of things right so how does a baby pick it up the baby picks it up only on the basis of imitation and therefore i said that uh, the profession of teaching where constantly we need to remember this point that our students or our learners imitate the teacher and therefore the teacher has to be good right otherwise uh, the learners will imitate the wrong things so just to give you an example if my pronunciation is not correct and i'm teaching them english for example the correct pronunciation of the word c o l l e g e is what c o l l -E -E. college uh, college yeah now rosmon right. uh, many people and you are also pronouncing it as college but just mm -hmm. check the dictionary and the dictionary will tell college. you that the pronunciation is college college yeah college it it's short e yeah how do you say yeah. that can you say that again college 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 no. oh. there is no a it's e college 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 rosemon you'll have to say it 10 times today before going to bed so you remember it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys <laughs> yeah sumon how do you say that word college uh, no it's not college it's college 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 correct college yeah college ele college yeah correct yeah yeah college no college 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 all of you have studied phonetics so use short e college okay uh, on on siri okay yes college college okay good uh, vanchana college college once again college no college no. <laughs> college no. <laughs> the shorter one college 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 okay uh, patanam college okay good tatia college no it's not a it is e college college okay i'm sure with some practice all of you will get it <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. the point i'm making is that because our learners because our students are going to imitate us uh, let us uh, emphasize on this aspect that our pronunciation is correct because uh, if we make a mistake it's quite possible that the learners will pick up uh, the wrong pronunciation so behaviorists emphasized on the importance of imitation okay clear everyone so remember behaviorism as a school of thought came before cognitivism okay so yes clear you, ma'am yes yeah so if you ask me what are the implications for a teacher uh, who is going to follow the behavioristic approach i would say the implications are if i am a teacher who is going to follow behaviorism i would try to be the right kind of stimulus i will bring in different stimuli in my classroom i will motivate the learners to repeat i emphasize on drilling i pay attention to reward and punishment and i make them imitate clear everyone any doubt clear, any questions clear right but after this approach uh, came in cognitivism all of you have heard the name of noam chomsky yes. right who actually criticized this approach he criticized behaviorism and let me tell you why why did he criticize behaviorism 
uh, he said a lot about the role of imitation and he said that actually entire learning cannot happen through imitation so chomsky believed that there is a lot of role played by the human mind in the process of learning so another name for uh, another name for cognitivism is mentalistic approach mental mind mentalistic approach now why did chomsky criticize behaviorism uh, i'm just going to tell you a small story uh, which chomsky often narrates so that you understand the importance of cognitivism uh, chomsky as you know as a native speaker of english uh, in the united states of america and once chomsky observed that uh, some children in usa were using the verb form goad g o e d what is the verb form what is the past tense form of go what is the past went right uh, went us, yes went. went right but then chomsky surprisingly observed that some children in united states use the verb form goad g o e d and he started thinking why why are children saying goad now what could be the answer why do you think children were using goad is the misha teacher uh it's only they think uh, if we want to you know, if we want to describe past tense we have to put ed right so, absolutely so right. you know uh, yeah in in linguistics we call this a case of over generalization that in many verbs in english take ed as the past tense and therefore they feel that even to the verb go we need to add ed now though this was a mistake uh chomsky was a linguist right it it set him thinking and then came uh, what we call as the cognitivistic approach where chomsky criticized behaviorism and chomsky said that we need to recognize the role of human mind you know behaviorism it's not only about imitation and behavior uh, but let us try to understand how human mind contributes to the process of learning okay uh if you want i'll just wait for a minute you can just write the key words uh, of this slide in your notebook i'll wait for a minute <clears throat> and then i'll explain so uh, if you think of behaviorism you know those stimulus and reward and punishment and all these things are important i think the approach was criticized <clears throat> because it was considered to be a very mechanical approach right whereas teaching and learning is much different according to chomsky so in our teaching situation uh, he believes that we we as teachers we need to understand uh, the role of human mind Uh, we need to understand this aspect that learners contribute a lot to the process of learning right so our job as teacher should be to channelize the learners to think you know let us not do 
uh, spoon feeding. Let us not give away all the answers because the more we would encourage them to think, better learning is going to happen. So cognitivism believes in this notion that learning is doing. If I'm a good teacher, I will not go on talking because if I just go on talking and if students only have to listen to me, then they are not doing much. So the more you make them work, uh, again, uh, all those of you who said that you, Patanam uh, wants to work in error analysis or uh, teaching of speaking skill, Tatya and Piachal and uh, even Rose Simon, all of you, in fact, Sumon, uh, Vanchana, vocabulary, I would say try to make your research as much activity oriented, as much participative as possible. Therefore, importance of collaborative learning. I think all of you will have to show in your research uh, how you're going to make uh, them do things. So you are there, you know. Uh, I, I always feel that for a teacher, a better word is facilitator. You know this word, facilitator. That we facilitate, to facilitate something means to make it easy for the learners. So we as teachers are there not to give away everything. We are there to facilitate the process of learning. So uh, in your research, uh, please see to it that your research becomes learner centric. Your research becomes activity oriented. Your in your research, there's a lot of scope basically for the learners to do things, to act on it. So moving to the next point, cognitivism believed that learning is a matter of insight formation and not habit formation. You know, it was behaviorism that believed that learning is habit formation. Whereas cognitivists would now say that if you really want to teach well, bring in many methods, many approaches, be innovative and give insights to your learner. That is important. Uh, in cognitivism, errors are considered to be stepping stones to success. Remember, errors are a sign of learning. Uh, Piyachit, uh, no, not Piyachit, sorry. Uh, Patanam, if you can unmute yourself for a mo moment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, see, because you said you want to work on error analysis. Uh, I'm sure you agree with me that uh, errors are important in learning. Right? Yes, uh, right. The first time I prepared tea, I'm sure it was a bad tea. And uh, the first time I rode my bicycle, I'm sure it was a bad ride. So we have all learned through errors. Uh, but I think in your research, uh, you must try to think as to why learners are committing errors. Rather than just correcting their errors, you yes. can focus and you can think of various reasons. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of uh, a very well-known book uh, called uh, Error Analysis. The author is Pitt Corder. Pitt Corder, P-I-T-C-O-R-D-E-R. -E it's an excellent book that every uh, person in the domain of ELT must read. So Pitt Corder talks about, you know, uh, teacher-induced error. Now, if I'm a bad teacher, if my pronunciation is bad and if you are my student, you will pick up that bad pronunciation. So here the error has occurred because it's called a teacher induced error. He says error because of over generalization, uh, error because of interference from mother tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, he also mentions a learner's uh, casual attitude, you know, that I do a very good job, but my learner is very casual, he will commit errors. So errors are important. Uh, in learning, errors are a sign of learning, actually, because if my learners don't commit errors, I don't understand whether what I'm teaching is even reaching their brain. So uh, it's a good topic, uh, Patnam, and I hope uh, you will be able to arrive at more reasons for why errors take place. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. So to conclude this slide, I would say that uh, if we compare behaviorism and cognitivism, which do you think is a better approach? Now, both have strengths, no doubt. You know, behaviorism also has some positive points. But if you compare behaviorism with cognitivism, can you tell me which approach uh, has greater strengths, greater positive points? Uh, Rosmon? Uh, 
actually uh, can can we mix up the approach all together between behaviorism and cognitive cognitivistic yeah because uh, i think both is a uh, is is the i think both is the best one yeah we, but we cannot i think we cannot uh, we cannot use only one approach okay mm -hmm. <laughs> but for me <laughs> okay okay yeah. but now what do you think Patanan? Patanan. I I just thinking okay. <laughs> which one is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, I think it is, depends on the skill. Like um mm -hmm. if a uh, communicative skill, a like, um speaking, listening, I think the uh, behavior, uh, behavioristic mm -hmm. approach is, is better than cognitive, right? But um in, in writing uh Reading, writing and reading. Sorry, I think because uh, when when you write, you have to to think about how to how to how to write the words. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now uh, the only thing is, but Nancy, even with respect to speaking, if mm -hmm. I just make them imitate, if I am a good stimulus, this mm -hmm. alone cannot make them a good speaker. I think this aspect of learning is doing is important even to improve speaking skill, because yeah. unless the learners participate, the learners repeat, the learners do role plays, presentations, group discussion, they will not improve their speaking skill. Right. So quite yeah. often uh, what the point I'm making is, as Rosamond said, it could be a combination. And mm -hmm. I think it's very important that each one of us um, make a journey at least from behaviorism to cognitivism let us not mm -hmm. stop at behaviorism because uh, I, I i personally like cognitivistic approach more i know the uh, the, the the strengths of behaviorism of course but mm -hmm. i think it has got very limited goals it can be used in very limited settings you know repetition and drilling now we don't learn everything through repetition in our life it's not possible i think i have to develop insight in the subject for example, uh, if I'm a poetry teacher, right, I have to teach my learners the art of interpreting a poem. This can't happen merely through repetition and imitation. So I'll have to develop certain techniques through which they develop this skill. So I hope you are now familiar with these approaches and in your research, uh, at least try to do something with the cognitivistic approach. I'm sure your learners will enjoy it more. Uh, it will help you to make your research more learner-centric, more participative, and uh, they would like it. Uh, in my next session, uh, where we are going to meet for an hour, uh, I'm going to show you some activities through which you can implement cognitivism and you can make your classes more interesting. Okay. Any other question before I move ahead? Not yet, Professor. Okay. Okay, so I would say that teaching, as I've already said, it is an art and a challenge because a teacher needs to know how to teach in many different ways. So try to be uh, familiar with as many approaches as possible. Uh, try to know many different methods, many different approaches and pick up the best one uh, that suits your requirement. I think the teacher needs to create suitable materials for learning and thus play the role of a material producer. Uh, I think each one of you, you might pick up some material from Google. You may pick up some material from some textbooks, from some reference books. But let me tell you that each one of you is going to be a material producer for your research in ELT. Uh, for example, Vanchana. Can you unmute? Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, Vanchana, when you develop students' word path, you will have to create your own material to develop their vocabulary. Right. So yes. you can make you can make use of the existing material, but at the same time, you will have to create your own materials. 
similarly, Rosesmon, uh, when you do something for speaking ability and using literature to develop their speaking ability, as I said, this will be your material. No one else in the world has created exactly the same material. Right. So what kind of literary texts you are going to choose, for example, uh, becomes your material. Uh, so which poems or uh, which short stories, uh, exactly what kind of uh, novels or plays you are going to use, that becomes your own material uh, for which all of you will have to work hard because, you know, you might create, you might collect 50 materials and finally when you reach your phd stage you might decide to use only 10 of them right so uh, as i keep saying in any research in elt uh, the principle of selection and rejection is very important select what suits you the most reject what is not going to be very useful for your learners then a teacher needs to simplify the topic and provide adequate practice. So with speaking skill, with CLT, with vocabulary, uh, try to give a lot of reinforcement. You know this word? Reinforcement is extra practice, adequate practice. And as a teacher, I think we have to make an attempt to make learning a rewarding experience, a good experience for our learners. So. You, you will have to, we will all have to understand the meaning and definition of teaching and learning. We have to understand what behaviorism is. We have to understand what cognitivism is. We have to compare, as Rosemon said, quite often, we have to combine different methods and approaches and see to it that uh, as a teacher, we have excellent knowledge, excellent skill, and we are able to impart the best. Okay. Uh, you don't have to write this down, but uh, this is something that uh, will interest uh, Rosemont's topic. Uh, there's a very uh, well-known uh, linguist, a Russian linguist named Jakobson, uh, who says, a linguist deaf to the poetic function of language and a literary scholar indifferent to linguistic problems and unconversant with linguistic methods are equally flagrant anachronisms. The, uh, the language is a little tough, but I'll explain it to you. What he's saying is that if we have a linguist who never reads literature, who never pays attention to the beauty of language, to the creative use of language in literature, and if we have a literary scholar who doesn't pay any attention to linguistics, is not bothered about linguistic terms and concepts, these are uh, not so good things. All right. So what he's suggesting is that a linguist should make use of literature and a literary scholar should refer to language. So I think Rosemont, by combining language and literature in your research, uh, Jakobsen will be happy that you are going to use literature uh, to enhance speaking skill or enhance language skills. So the point I'm making is that as ELT experts, uh, let us understand that literature and language are not divorced. They are not poles apart. You know, they have to go together. And once again, um, uh, for example, Sumon, when you work with communicative language teaching, you can think of whether you want to bring in a little literature. Because as I said, literature fascinates uh, the kids, the students. They start taking interest in language. So uh, you can also give a thought to, your, uh, to this point in your research that while uh, implementing communicative language teaching, whether you want to give them a short story, for example, or uh, Patanam, uh, uh, yeah, one minute, yeah, uh, Patanam where you talked about error analysis. Now while correcting errors, uh, you can also show them some sample from literature. Uh, imagine a situation where your learner has made a mistake with a passive voice. Uh, you take a short story and you try to tell him how passive voice is used in that story. Or you can even discuss why passive voice is used in that story, which, which helps him to understand the concept well. Or uh, Tatia and uh, again, Rosemon and even Vanchana, uh, where you will be working with vocabulary and speaking, 
I would say uh, literature gives us the best sample example to understand how language functions. So to improve their word power, to improve their speaking skill, uh, you may think of using literature. I'm not saying you have to, but I'm just giving you ideas. Okay. So some of the topics uh, on which you may want to work and you will have to uh, consider for your research could be uh, theories of language learning. You can think of language acquisition and language learning, right? Acquisition is a different process than learning. Uh, micro teaching, peer teaching, as I said, uh, to zoom on, bring in collaborative learning, you know, make them peer evaluation, peer teaching. Uh, many of you will have to do remedial teaching. You will have to help the weak learners uh, of your class. The teaching of language skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Again, this is a very fertile uh, area of research. ESP, you have already talked about ESP. That's a modern uh, area of research. You can even think of using technology in language and literature teaching. So uh, try to use music, try to use technology to make your classes more interesting. Uh, I've already said that a teacher needs to play the job of a material producer. So work in material production. All of you will have to think of testing and evaluation, right? So, but none, for example, you work on error analysis, but think of how you can evaluate them well. Think of how you can evaluate speaking skill. Uh, Rosemont, think of how you can bring in the aspect of evaluation with respect to business uh, administrators. Uh, so I think we can't just uh, teach them. Evaluation will give us a feedback. Evaluation will give you a feedback to understand whether uh, your research has helped them to bring the change and then the cycle is complete, right? <coughs> It could be teaching of uh, grammar and vocabulary. Uh, you can also work on methods in language teaching. So, you know, I think if you keep all these aspects in mind, your research will become good. Your research uh, will have the aspect of a design, creativity, bringing change, activity oriented, uh, testing and evaluation so that your research uh, kind of becomes complete. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go through a short story and I'll conclude this session. There were a few coins in the hat. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, turned it around and wrote some words. Uh, so this is a story of a boy, a, bl a blind boy who was asking for money. Okay, uh, he had written because he was blind. He said, uh, he, he wrote something like, please help me. And he was asking for money. But then one man came, uh, he took the sign, turned it around and wrote some words. One stranger on the road, he wrote something. He put the sign back so that everyone who walked by will see the new words. Soon the hat began to fill up a lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. So initially, uh, not many people were giving money to the blind boy. But now this stranger came, he wrote something, and now more people started giving money to the boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign came to see how things were. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? He was blind, but he realized that suddenly people have started giving me money. So what has happened? What has he written? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. What he had written was, today is a beautiful day and I cannot see it. Remember the first sign was, I am blind, please help, which was very direct. But now the stranger who came in, he said, today is a beautiful day and I cannot see it. 
the first sign simply told people to help by putting some money in the hat the second sign told people that they were able to enjoy the beauty of the day but the boy could not enjoy it because he was blind the lesson is as teachers be creative as a teacher let us be innovative as a teacher let us think differently and i think let us believe in this philosophy that there is always a better way i think creativity being innovative thinking differently trying out different things and having this philosophy that uh, there is always a better way uh, can certainly make our teaching learning better and i think that can make us a better researcher as well so uh, that brings me to the end of session 1 uh, all of you are a lovely audience so i hope that you would enjoy uh, your research in elt right uh, let me just stop sharing yeah yeah i uh, professor do, do you want to have the break or do you want to continue the the the, the presentation uh yeah i think a short break more than me i'm sure all of you need it isn't it <laughs> okay, 10 yeah, minutes is okay we, yeah. right just so, so we start again at 3:55 is that okay is that Now, it, okay what what's the time in your watch um 3:45 3:45 in thailand okay. and 3:55 we yes. we'll come back Okay yes. I uh, just give me I think we'll have 15 minutes break because I'm going to have my lunch and uh, ah. uh, yeah in, in in India right now is it is 2:10 oh. afternoon ah. okay because I came today it so was a faster working, yeah you're faster mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. it was a working day for me so I just came 5 minutes before our session started so okay. exactly after 15 minutes we will start okay and from okay, the first from the first session whatever questions you have i will first answer your questions before uh, we start with the session on the next session okay okay thank yeah. you yeah see so you at four yes thank you
Okay, well, and so welcome back to the uh, last hour of the uh, section. Okay, the topic is linguistic leading to TEFL, TESO, and ELT theory and practice um, to research. Okay, and may I invite uh, uh, Professor Dr. Moturi Shida Gokali to continue her uh, lecture, please. Thank you, Vanchana. Uh, right. As I said uh, before, I proceed to the next session. Uh, if there are any questions uh, from what I said with respect to session one, uh, quickly I'll answer them and uh, then we can move ahead. Does anyone have any question, any comment, anything? Maybe not yet, ma'am. Not yet, okay. Professor. Okay. Uh, so I assume everything is clear, right? When there are no questions, there are only two possibilities. Either everything is absolutely clear or nothing is clear. So I hope uh, all of you have the first answer, right? Right. All right. So I'll move on to the second session uh, where I'm going to uh, make it a little practical oriented. I'm going to demonstrate uh, what different activities uh, you might want to conduct in your research. Just I'm going to give you a glimpse of uh, what different things one can do in ELT uh, as far as the role of material production is concerned. Uh, I'll share the screen. Uh, Vanchana, is it visible? Yes, it's clearly, Professor. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, just to take a clue from the first session, what we have been discussing. Uh, in the previous session, we talked about uh, what is teaching and what is learning. Uh, just before I go into the activities now, uh, very briefly, I'll put forth. Uh, these ideas once again. I think we have already defined learning as a process of change or as a process of transformation. Learning is something that brings about a desirable change in every learner. Uh, learning has to be pleasurable. So I would say uh, whether uh, P. Achat, for example, is going to try to develop students' speaking skill or Vanchana, you will develop students' word power or Rosamond will work with speaking ability of business administrators or Patnam will work uh, with error analysis. It's very important to uh, put this aspect in mind that we have to conduct activities in such a way uh, that learning proves to be a pleasurable endeavor. So learning is also a journey from known to unknown. We always, we might know something about the area, something about the discipline. Uh, but we try to move towards the unknown, something that we don't know. Uh, learning is a journey from dependence to independence. Initially, when you start teaching words, when you start developing speaking skill, when you work with error analysis, initially our learners are going to be dependent on us to a very large extent as teachers, right? But then good teaching would mean that now they have become independent they don't need a teacher anymore. So uh, that is a sign of progress if they become independent. And I've already touched on this aspect of learning is doing. So let us do many things in the class. Let it be activity oriented. Let there be collaborative learning, participative approach. And this can help the learners to learn a lot. Now, <clears throat> for enhancing linguistic competence, what do we need to teach? Uh, certainly, we need to teach uh, sounds, so we need to teach phonetics, words, vocabulary, a little of grammar. Uh, we have to tell them how to uh, transfer meaning. Uh, we have to work with LSRW, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Now, because uh, some of you are going to work in speaking and writing, uh, let me say it right away uh, that the order of these skills is very important. Can someone tell me why? Why can't I say R-S-L-W? 
or why can't i say w s r l i'm saying that it has to be l s r w why anyone his name is first yes yes sumon yes yes, yes. Since, what the uh, things born uh, since we are we are coming from our our mother so we need mm -hmm. we have to learn we have to learn by listening Mm -hmm. After that, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, after that, by imitating our our family members, we have to speak. Mm -hmm. Then we can uh, we know uh, we learn uh, uh, what chunks of words. So, uh, 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 <laughs> becoming we have uh, we we become uh, a lot of a lot of words and uh, uh, chunks of words. But we need. Uh, we need, we need, uh, we we learn to read. Uh, uh, we learn to read um, another step as as another step. Mm -hmm. Writing and okay. writing is the last step. So it is <laughs> yes. Writing is the last stage because we um, it, it is difficult mm -hmm. to learn. Uh, grammar structure rules and a lot of vocabulary mm -hmm. okay okay uh, quite can, right excuse quite me right. can i support uh miss yes. sumon ong yes yeah, sure uh, i think uh so before uh when when we growing up we have the more much more listening and then after we are uh, listening more much more so we can speak that we mm -hmm. think that we can <coughs> listen and then mm -hmm. after we speak, so we can read and write ever mm -hmm. after. Yes. Right, right. Yes. Absolutely. So uh, to combine all your answers, I would say listening is a pathway for good speaking. If I'm not a good listener, I'm not going to become a good speaker. Right. As Suman said, uh, studies in neurolinguistics. Neurolinguistics, what, what do neurolinguists study? Nerves, the, the study of uh, neuro meaning nerves. Neuro means nerves. Nerves, so, nerves. So brain. It basically nerves. means brain and language, brain, yes. right? So studies in neurolinguistics tell us that the baby doesn't start listening to mother tongue after birth, but when the baby is in the mother's womb three months when the baby is in the mother's womb, the baby already has started listening to the language. So for example, uh, I, I believe in Myanmar, the name of the country is Myanmar and the name of the language is also Myanmar. Am I right? You, you speak Myanmar language, is that so? Students from Myanmar, what is your mother tongue? Hello, hmm? Professor. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Uh, you're asking me, Professor. So because uh, I have some parts because of my poor connection. So could you, uh, could you repeat it? You are from Myanmar, Suman. Yes. Yes, Professor. So, yeah. Yes. My question is, uh, is your language also called Myanmar language? What language do you speak? What's your mother tongue? Yes. Yes, Myanmar language. <laughs> Myanmar, right. So. Okay. Myanmar, yes. Yeah, Myanmar, right. So studies in neurolinguistics tell us that children in Myanmar listen, start listening to Myanmar language right from the time when they are in the mother's womb. When after the mother conceives, three months after that, the baby starts listening to the language. And at least for 17 to 18 months, the baby listens to the language. So in India, uh, for example, my mother tongue is Marathi. I come from one of the states called Maharashtra, where uh, people would listen to Marathi for 17 to 18 months. Then the child starts babbling and speaking. Then he goes to school and would learn reading and writing. Okay, so in all your research, uh, people who are work, going to work with speaking skill, uh, people who are going to work uh, with enhancement of speaking ability, error analysis, vocabulary building. Uh, I think all of you will have to do and 
do something at least with respect to listening skill right because as i said that you can't jump to speaking or reading or writing the more you train them in listening skill they will become effective speakers or effective uh, readers and finally you have to of course uh, also teach them some study skills so if they like for example referring to a dictionary effectively is a study skill so as a teacher as an english teacher uh, what i'm just saying is that we need to teach them phonetics we need to teach them words we need to teach them grammar how to express meaning and work with all the four language skills any question all right so i have already said this uh, i will not spend much time on this but uh, let us do some activities for reinforcement i think we have to create opportunities for spaced repetition so that we conduct a lot of activities uh, we have to give them individual assignments and also assignments for collaborative learning so that they uh, work together there is peer group learning there is peer evaluation and i think uh, as teachers we need to provide a chance to go beyond the syllabus through interesting assignments so your job as a phd scholar is to create such important uh, such innovative assignments that the learners will find interest in learning okay i'll wait for a minute if you want to write down some keywords from this slide you can do that um the very first line of this slide i have said that at every stage of learning only partial learning takes place uh, rosamond what do you understand by this sentence <clears throat> the very first sentence for give give them the opportunities for revisiting the topic taught in the class mm -hmm. and reinforcement uh, i mean that uh that i understand is to give them both in like positive and negative way in classroom that they do, did activities for example if they they present in the class okay and then they can share uh or have discussion between our or among themselves okay mm -hmm. we can have a like admiration and if they they could not uh do something or they ignore so we have to like uh to make i i i i don't like to use the word blame but we have to teach them and push them motivate them to do something in the class right so that is a reinforcement for me mm -hmm. and uh, you know when i say at every stage of learning only partial learning takes place what i also mean is that there is nothing like total learning right i have been teaching english for last uh, 18 20 years now but i can't say that i know everything about english impossible no one can claim that and i think that is the beauty of teaching that and that is the beauty of learning that we will always keep learning as a teacher we will always keep learning also right so we have to maintain that point right okay so i'm just going to uh, take you through some of these slides which will tell you how you can uh, frame a learner centric activity uh, how you can make uh, the learner the center of the class and so on now just to give you an example uh, imagine that you have to teach sounds uh, and if you have to teach them word stress right i think we have to tell them the total number of syllables for example in the word photograph it will be photograph right and which syllable is stressed it is the first syllable so we say photograph photograph so all those of you um, 
Rosamon and Tatia, when you are going to work with speaking skill, you will have to teach them sounds, word stress, intonation, weak forms. So you will have to come up with different activities uh, to make your class learner centric. So as I've said, uh, you can pre prepare some activities. You can prepare your own cards. You know, just as we have a game of cards, on the card, you can write the word and you can, on the back side of the card, uh, you can say which word is stressed, which syllable is stressed. Okay, so they find it interesting. Uh, if you want to teach them uh, what is called as intonation, you know, where, where my tone changes. For example, if I say, I want to buy a green shirt. My maximum, I'm focusing on the word shirt, right? But if I say, I want to buy a green shirt, I want to buy a green shirt. Now my nucleus is different. My focus is different. I, instead of shirt, if I focus on green, the meaning of the sentence changes, right? I, I'll show it to you once again. <coughs> In the first sentence, if I say, I want to buy a green shirt. If I focus on shirt, the meaning is, I don't want to buy a green cap. I don't want to buy a green trouser, but I want to buy a green shirt. But if I say, I want to buy a green shirt. Now it means not a red shirt, not a yellow shirt. So the point I'm making is that our tone, our intonation is related to the meaning as well. Right, it is not just an entity in grammar. So we have to give our uh, learners a chance to practice to read. So uh, Rosamon and Tatia and you know those who are going to work in speaking skill, as I said, give them sufficient practice in listening. Right, make them speak, make them read. All these three things will help them to develop their speaking skill. So. Uh, while reading, we try to understand what we read. Reading, apart from listening, is an important way of getting exposed to English. Our exposure to English increases our communicative competence. The more you read, the more proficient user of English you can be. If you want to improve your English, read. If you want to gain confidence in using English, read. So reading uh, will also have to be emphasized in your classes. So <coughs> for example, uh, zoom on when you uh, bring in uh, the CLT approach, you can also think of whether you uh, want your learners to first work with listening, reading, and then they can go to speaking. Because you know that will train them, that will help them to move uh, easily towards speaking. Yes, Rosemon, any question? No, ma'am, it's just a review and write it down that you okay. tell okay. me. Okay, okay. So uh, what you can do to improve speaking skill is you can, you know, actually write down certain role plates. You know, you write a dialogue, let them read, let them repeat behaviorism. Right. So as, as I think Rosemon had said, uh, actually both behaviorism and cognitivism will help us. So you we can't go to a class and say, okay, you are a conductor, you are a passenger, speak. That's not going to happen. Right. So as a teacher, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a dialogue. I will show that dialogue to my students. Let them repeat in chorus behaviorism. Slowly, they would get used to Uh, we cannot hear our professor. Maybe the signal was disappeared. I'm not sure. Yes, I think Anybody so. Anybody can hear me? Yes, I hear you. <laughs> professor, okay. can you hear us? Professor, uh, to me. <laughs> okay. Maybe the Indian device. Yeah. So waiting, yeah, waiting her for a while. Thank you. 
<laughs> Dr. Kampi, please send the link message and ask her about this. Yes, she is she's rejoined now. Okay. I think that the internet system in India is much better than Thailand, I guess. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah. But what, what uh, the part I like the most uh, spoken by Professor Mathuli is reading. Reading is a very crucial factor, very effective skills to uh, improve the other red of skills. Because when uh, I was in Singapore, uh, last I think last 10 years at a time as a rail, rail is a center for giving uh, intensive trainings to the personnel from Ministry of Education in Southeast Asia. Uh, that center is a very uh, influential uh, center for English development. And at a time I, I met one, one professor. Now he's very, very popular and very well known, Dr. Bill Lee. I think you heard this name. Uh, he's coming to give you a, a very special lecture next term. Dr. Billy is very well known now. And he always busy through year round. At that time, he is, he is very unknown man, all right? But I think he's, he's ready to be a rising star. Uh, Professor Dr. Billy is from Indonesia. And not easy for a foreigners to to get a job in in singapore so i think dr Billis will be good enough to get a, to get a job in indonesia and at a time i was sent by the ministry of education at a time the university is under under ministry of education not uh, not just like in the moment now we are under the ministry of higher education but last long ago we are under Ministry of Education. So I was sent to Singapore by Ministry of Education to check the uh, adjunct is coming. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you later on. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think there was some internet issue. Uh, I'll share the screen again, okay? okay. All right, so I hope the screen is visible and I'm audible, both. Yeah? Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, okay. So uh, as I was saying that those of you who uh, would be working with speaking, you can also think of how you're going to teach them politeness markers. Uh, for example, uh, in Rosamond, in your work, when you uh, try to develop speaking ability of the business administrators, I think one of the very important points or aspects is going to be teaching politeness markers. Because as I said, uh, by definition, English is one of the most polite languages of the world. So we can use literature, we can create role plays and teach uh, the aspect of politeness. Uh, when you want to develop pronunciation, uh, you can even think of uh, having certain poems, where you know some of the words uh, you want to teach them pronunciation. For example, I'm not going to read the whole poem, but uh, look at uh, R A T I O N and N A T I O N. They rhyme, but they are pronounced in a different way, right? Say prefer, we say prefer, but preferable. Now there is no logic here, right? With many rules of the language, let it be Thai or Myanmar or any other language or English. Uh, I think every language uh, has illogicalities. We don't always have mathematical rules. So through such poems, uh, we can teach them uh, how to pronounce the word correctly. We can develop their word power. For example, B must not be heard in doubt. D-O-U-B-T. B is there in spelling, but B is not there in pronunciation. Right. So as I said, through poems, we can 
uh, encourage our learners or we can help our learners to remember the correct pronunciation. Then uh, comes a very important aspect. So as I said, if you want to develop a student's sound or knowledge of phonetics, you will have to work with basic sounds of English. You will have to do something about word stress, intonation, politeness markers. Now, when we move on to words and vocabulary, uh, Vanchana, for example, since this is going to be your topic of research, uh, try to make it more realistic. For example, if you say, write down words that exist in the classroom, you know, the objects that exist in the classroom. So it's like people are actually going to look around and uh, they find that association. So maybe the signal disappeared again. There might be words uh, that, yeah you know, some of them, some of the words that they're not familiar with. Or if you give them an activity uh, where you say that, uh, write down words that do not have the letters A, B, C, D in them. I think somebody talked about using game as a stimulus. Now this is like a game. You know, it's not very easy to write a word which does not have A, B, C, D, right? So. If we had time, we would have played it, but you can try uh, in your own classrooms. Uh, so vocabulary games can be conducted. Uh, you know, for example, a participant performs. Uh, let me try. Uh, I'm going to show you some action, okay? And you have to tell me the word. What, what, what word is there in my mind, okay? Yes. Can you tell me some words? Um, big. 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 Okay. What else? But none? C circle. Okay. Go ahead. What what, um, what could it be? Hmm? What do you mean? Round shape. Round shape. Round shape. Circle. Okay. Anything else? Bloom. What is it? Bloom. <laughs> Bloom, uh, but I'm not yeah. doing this. I'm not doing <laughs> this. I'm doing this. <laughs> okay. What else? Right, Alice. Correct. Round circle. What else? What looks like this? Earth. Correct. Earth. Correct. One <laughs> yes. Correct. Now you know you can you can motivate your learners to think of words. So in the classroom they may say round big, circle, earth, universe, global. You know, the advantage is that if I don't know the word uttered by my friend, my teacher is going to help me to understand the word. So through games, uh, you can create a lot of activities. Uh, also things like write the synonyms of words. Uh, can you tell me some synonyms of the word angry? Quickly. Mad. Mad. mad, yes. Okay, Up, mad. Upset. Mad is... Upset. Upset is sad. Upset is not That's... necessarily angry. It can be crazy. 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 Uh, okay. Piss off. Yes, what now? Piss off. Okay. Uh, I'm not going Moody. to... Moody. Sorry? Moody. Moody. Okay. Furious. And yeah, furious. Very good. I try. Yeah. Annoyed. Annoyed. Very good. Good. Good on Siri. Uh, Sunwan, any word? Synonym Mets. of. Sorry. Met. 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 Okay. Uh, now this afternoon, this evening, I'm not going to give you all words, but let me just tell you that in English there are around 115 words which mean angry. Oh. Around 115. Wow. If, and, and that's the beauty of, of, of English as a language because yes. uh, I think English is a very rich language because yes. it has borrowed a lot of words from different mm -hmm. languages of the world. Yeah. English has words yeah. from Latin, Greek, French, German, Spanish, Indian languages, and so on. Yes. 
so uh, you know for example there is a word in english livid l i v i d now livid means to be extremely angry so if i say uh, if i am a boss of a company and if i say the worker came late today i was angry but if i say the worker came late to the office 25th time i was livid right so livid angry annoyed furious irritated throw a tantrum sulky grouchy glum grumpy there are so many words in english so i think uh, uh, vanchana especially because you mentioned vocabulary in your topic uh, see to it that you give a lot of chance to your learners to play with words let them go wrong but let them use language okay uh, i think the first step of learning english is to remove fear remove phobia from their mind so create games create activities so that uh, they will develop their confidence okay uh, see i have given you some words on the screen mad annoyed furious livid lose your temper fed up with something throw a tantrum grumpy sulky etc now the point is that each of these words uh, has a particular environment in which we use it right so normally we would say throw a tantrum only with reference to children kids you take them to a mall and they want a cadbury and they throw tantrum if we don't give them right uh, so every every word for example i i think it was uh, rosemon or sumon who gave me the word mad now if you check the dictionary mad uh, means angry in american english and mad can be used only in informal situations okay so that's the speciality of that word which we must give to our learners uh, if you ask them to give synonyms of the word walk then wander stride march wade stroll all these words in english mean walk clear so the point i'm making is that let us give maximum exposure to the words exposure to english uh, through our activities <clears throat> you can even ask them to find meanings of prefixes and suffixes what is the meaning of the prefix re r e again no back again right yeah. so once i know that re means again i will understand the meaning of rewrite right so the the knowledge of prefix and suffix helps our learners to understand the meaning of words can anyone tell me what is the meaning of the last suffix dash c i d e yes on on siri you want to give me the answer um like suicide yeah so so what's the meaning of dash c i d e it's mean uh, don't don't check your google i'm asking you <laughs> i did the it the thing is uh, i found many meanings the, the like, cognitive i i, I want ourselves or something try it is no i was just saying don't check your google because i want to adopt the mentalistic approach you know the the uh -huh. channelizing the learners mind i try it on side no. uh, can be means like a killing killing or correct correct cutting cut cut off so dash c i d e means to kill so if kill. you know the meaning now you can understand the meaning of suicide to kill oneself pesticide insecticide killing insects right so uh, if we give our students the knowledge the meaning of prefixes and suffixes i think uh, that could be another uh, important activity for enhancing vocabulary uh vanchana you can even think of creating activities of this kind uh, what i did in one of my classes was i created a small paragraph okay 
Yes. Everywhere you can see the word nice is underlined. And you have to substitute the word nice with some other word. Mm -hmm. Can we try doing it? All of you can do this exercise right now. I'll give you two, three minutes. Or not. So it was really nice spending time with you in Goa. You have to think of another word for nice. Um, nice means good. Nice means? Good, good. Good. It was really good spending time with you. Okay. Okay. Take, take one or two minutes. Just wherever I have underlined nice, think of another word. Okay, uh, now where I've said uh, weather was nice, can you, what other word can we use? It can be the good weather. Okay, good weather. Good weather. Any other? Beautiful. Beautiful weather. Beautiful. Fine. What is great? It? Great. Yes, it could the weather be. is great. Weather is great. Cool weather. Weather was fine. Fine. Splendid weather. You know, so I think you have to keep uh, motivating them to change words. Now, I was happy to meet your parents. The parents are really nice. What what word can we think of? Generous. Generous. Friendly. Kind. Friendly. Kind. Friendly. Yeah. Kind. Generous. Okay. Kind, Generous. Yes. Kind. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Friendly. Friendly. Uh, you know the word cordial. You know, people who are cordial. Ah, they have cordially. Been, ah. Right. They have got a, a very, very welcoming attitude. They are loving yeah. people. They are nice people. Right? So, um, Vanchan, I hope you see the advantage of an activity of this kind where in your research you can create tasks for your learners. Yes, Professor. It's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> uh, I think all of you can also make use of some cartoons, uh, maybe to help them guess the meaning of a word. Uh, remember, knowing the meaning is important, but we say that in language, uh, guessing the meaning of the word is equally important. For example, uh, imagine uh, that your students don't know some idiom or they don't know a phrase. The first part says, Claire broke up with me. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. Second picture, don't worry. There are plenty of fish in the sea if you know what I'm saying. So, you know, if people don't understand the meaning of plenty of fish, the picture, the cartoon, or through the cartoon, you can uh, train them in understanding meanings of words. From vocabulary now, I would like to suggest some activities for uh, teaching of grammar. <clears throat> the first thing that I have said is that our focus needs to shift from the teaching of formal grammar to functional grammar. Uh, can you tell me what is the difference between formal grammar and functional grammar? Uh, Ili? Yeah. And. Uh... How is the teaching? What is formal grammar and what is functional grammar? And uh, I think the teaching of formal grammar just uh, uh, maybe emphasize the grammar itself. And the functional grammar, maybe just uh, uh, we can just uh, understand it, just uh, um, the application about the grammar in our uh, language learning. Very good, right. Uh, that was a word, that was a correct word, application. I might have studied grammar, but if I'm not able to use it correctly in my day-to-day -day life, I have not learned functional grammar, right? So 
you know, for example, uh, in my class, uh, few simple future tense, I might give a rule to my students. Uh, will or shall plus main verb is simple future, right? But now if I make my students write an essay on my plans for future, then automatically my learners will have to make use of the simple future tense. Right, so uh, this is where we, we, we must make a shift, we must make a move from formal grammar to functional grammar. <coughs> I think again for grammar, let us give them different kinds of activities. Uh, for example, uh, is Tatia here? Yes, Professor. Uh, Yes. Uh, can you tell me uh, what is the difference in the first two sentences? They reach the railway station in time. They reach the railway station on time. Uh, they reach the railway station in time. In time is mean like they arrive. They arrive. They arrive. <laughs> they arrive. If the oh sorry oh sorry <laughs> mm -hmm. no problem oh, they they reach the railway station in time is mean like they re uh they reach at the place within the time within means when when <laughs> it's like if the railway station oh, is on three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they arrive at uh, before three, before three. Before three, correct. So yeah. in time actually means a little before time, uh, right? Okay. But on time, if the train is leaving, uh, if the train arrives at three and if you reach at three, then you reach on time. All right. All right. Uh, Sumon, can you tell me the difference in the second sentence? Students need to submit the project on Monday. Students need to submit the project by Monday. The students need to, uh, the first sentence is, uh, it is um, on, on Monday, they have to submit. So if I have finished my project on Sunday, I can't submit it in sentence one, yes. right? Yes. What is the meaning of, the, what is the meaning of sentence two? Um, it uh, second sentence means uh, they have uh, they need to uh, students need to submit the project before Monday, before Monday, before Monday. But can they also submit it on Monday? On Monday, uh, um, on exact <laughs> if when when it is when we arrive to Monday, it, uh, when students need to submit on that day. Uh, no, no, Sumon. I think you are a little confused. Uh, can someone answer it in a different way? Vanchana? Uh, I think on Monday is on that day. Mm -hmm. You have to do the submit a project on that day. But mm -hmm. my Monday is like a deadline to do it. Yeah, um, so it, it is a deadline, but if, if someone wants to submit it on Monday in sentence number two, also it is okay, right? But if I want to submit on Friday, I can do it only my if my teacher has used sentence number two, not sentence number one. Because in sentence number two, by Monday means till Monday. Any time till Monday, you can submit it. So if I finish my project on Friday, and if I want to submit it on Friday, I can, if my teacher has used sentence number two, but not sentence number one. If I finish on Friday, and if my teacher has said, submit your project on Monday, I have to wait till Monday to submit my project. Clear, Sumon? Yes, everyone, is it clear? Yes, Ajahn. Okay, uh, the last one. Um, who will tell me? Uh, Piyachat, the last one. The director looked at the complaint, the director looked into the complaint, and the director looked for the complaint. Uh, 
Um, the first one may be um, the director just look look at it, look at what the complaint is mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. The second one it means I uh, really define the cause, really investigate or examine what mm -hmm. is complaint. And the Got third it. is about um, find out like if there is any complaint or not. Look for complaint. One, your first and second answers are okay, right? The third one, Look. the director looked for the complaint means? It might be to find out the complaint. Yes, yes. To search for, to look for means he, he has lost it, that, that paper of complaint. Okay, Piacha? Is it? Piachat, are you there? Yes. Is it clear? What is the meaning of sentence three? You know, the director lost the complaint and now so he was looking for the complaint. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we don't, we are not in school or college. So let us not do all these activities. The point was to tell you how you can make your classes interesting, how you can uh, bring in a lot of uh, activities. Uh, you know, even when you teach uh, punctuation, look at both the sentences and the punctuation mark brings a difference in meaning. All of you are laughing, so you have understood what has happened, right? So let's eat grandma, means let's eat grandma. And let's eat grandma. So we are going to eat grandma. So one comma makes such a huge difference. Uh, look at the second one. A woman without her man is nothing. A woman without her man is nothing. So a shift in a comma, you know, those of you who will be working with writing skill, uh, I think it's important that you teach them the norms of punctuation also. Right? Everyone understands this. I think all of you have laughed. So I think you have understood it. Uh, you can also show them certain letters <clears throat> where, uh, you know, because the punctuation marks are different, the two letters have got two different meanings. You can take one minute and read it. Okay, I, I hope you understand how the tone is different, right? So it is comma and it is a full stop that is actually bringing a difference in meaning. You can also give uh, your learners something of this kind where you give them a wrong sentence and they have to correct the sentence. Uh, can someone tell me what is the error in sentence number four? Dentists must take care of their equipments. Uh, Rosemon, can you tell me what is wrong in sentence number four? Uh, I think the dentist, uh, for, for the, the, the verb take care of should be the, the person, not uh, take care of not the equipment. Take care of 
maybe uh, the user take care of and take care of. Yeah, that is okay. Take care <laughs> of is okay. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Others? Do you see any problem with that sentence? Yes, Professor. Yeah. Uh, let me share. I found just words, equipment. Uh, this is a uncountable now. We cannot add it. In Correct. This. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Very good. Right. Uh, please remember that there is no word in English uh, as equipment. It cannot be pluralized. It has to be singular. Equipment. You know, equipment cannot have S with it. So that is a mistake. So you can give them some tasks, you can make groups and you can motivate them to think of the right answer. Uh, I'm not going to play this video right now, but for listening, what I suggest is make them listen a lot to English, make them listen to different YouTube videos and channels and that can help them. I think for speaking, you have to initiate discussions. You have to give them an opportunity for public speaking. Uh, have a lot of pair work, right? So, you know, these are steps in developing speaking. Don't ask them to do public speaking straight away. They will not be able to do it because they carry a lot of fear. So uh, develop collaborative activities. Let them first work in groups and slowly you can help them to speak better. Uh, you can also show them a certain cartoons and, you know, initiate a discussion. For example, he's saying, I forgot to make a backup copy of my brain. So everything I learned last semester was lost. So you can show them a cartoon and you can give them a topic for group discussion. Uh, something like, uh, is today's education good? Are we able to remember things that our teachers teach us? So, you know, that, that kind of discussion can be initiated. Uh, you can show them picture and ask them to speak. Somebody will say, we need to work together. Somebody will say, united we stand, divided we fall. Somebody will say, unity is strength. Somebody will say, learn together. So, you know, different ideas can come to your mind uh, through pictures. Uh, I think everybody who is going to work on uh, speaking skill, language skills, uh, you can give them picture description as one of the activities, <clears throat> because uh, that also kind of trains them in phonetics, the children start communicating in English, they start speaking, and this can help them to develop uh, their understanding of English. So what I'm suggesting through all these activities is uh, give them maximum exposure to English language. Then uh, as far as reading is concerned, you can give them comprehension passages. <coughs> you need to teach them the art of skimming and scanning. Uh, join the cards. You know, if you take one short story, take one short story, divide it in five parts, make five groups, and children have to come together and join the cards. Now, this teaches them a lot about the story building right how, how words are connected to each other and you can uh, discuss some of the important ideas uh, in the passage okay i i won't go into reading comprehension uh, i think for writing we need to give them a lot of activities for creative writing uh, i'll just share uh, one such activity that i did in my own class uh, this was an undergraduate class what i told them was i gave them some words Okay, so I said bell ringing, water flowing, phone ringing, clapping, raining, birds chirping, siren of ambulance or police van. I gave them all these sounds and they were asked to create a story by using these words. Is it clear? Now it becomes very, very interesting because every group is going to think in a different way. And then you can monitor how they are writing and help them to write creatively. So, uh, you know, frankly speaking, I will admit that if someone had asked me to write a story uh, along these sounds, I may not have done a good job. But my some of my students did a better uh, job than what even I would have done as a teacher of English. They were so creative. They had some fantastic ideas. So, you know, let us help them with creativity. 
The last point is that uh, we also need to teach them study skills. So let us also teach them a little as to uh, how to refer to a dictionary because uh, a dictionary will tell us that uh, the same word uh, has different connotation. The same word has different meaning. For example, uh, on, uh, can you tell me, can you give me another word for cool in sentence number one? The weather is cool. On Siri? Yes, the, the first one, uh, it can be the uh, weather is cold. The weather is cold, right. Uh, Sumon, he remained cool even in that critical situation. He remained calm. He even remained that... calm. Right. He, he remained calm. Very good. Uh, Vanchana, her dress is cool. Fashionable. Modern. Modern. Attractive. Yeah. Right? That's right. Thank you. Uh, Rosamon, I got a rather cool reception this evening. Uh, fine. Okay. I, yeah. Can I use that word? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any, uh, Piatchet, I'm trying to cool her down before Peter comes. Just calm her down. Calm down. I'm trying to calm her down. Okay. And how was the party? Someone says it was cool. It was? It was great. It was great. It was enjoyable, nice, right? So Fascinating, you know, interesting. It was interesting, right. So what you can do is, uh, you know, while we are teaching different aspects of ELT, uh, quite often the learners feel that uh, we need to refer to a dictionary only to check the meaning of a word. But dictionary should be our one of our best friends because dictionary gives us transcription, phonetic transcription, word stress, synonyms, antonyms, usage, meaning, style. It gives us so much information. So I think that apart from uh, telling them to check the meaning of a word, all these other aspects should also come in picture. So what I've tried to show you in this session is, uh, I hope I'm, I have been able to make my point that a teacher needs to be a material producer. A teacher needs to think a lot as to how we need to create appropriate materials and take them uh, understanding our learners. Uh, we have to create a lot of activities so that the classes become more interesting. Uh, any question, anything that you want to ask from your side before I conclude? Yes, my dear participant, do you have any question to ask uh, Professor Matuli right now before uh, we finish the webinar today? Uh, I'm also giving you my email ID and in case uh, I could be of any help or use to you, you're most welcome to write to me as well. If you have any doubt later or during your research, if you need any help. Excuse me, Professor. Yes, Rosamon. Can, can you just suggest me when I uh, when I touch the presentation of English mm -hmm. in class or when I assign the students and then some students cannot um, cannot speak. I, I don't use this word. Uh, he gradually uh, try to speak English. Mm -hmm. So I ask them that why you are like a uh, cannot speak fluently like others. They, mm -hmm. they say that uh, they always think about the grammar when they speaking. So how can we uh, push them or motivate mm -hmm. them to to speak uh, without the without the like a phobia of grammar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, a very, a very good question, very interesting question. Uh, see, Rosemont, I, I, I'll suggest certain steps uh, in which you have to do it. 
Now, let us remember that grammar is certainly important uh, in communication, but I would say between grammar and fluency, fluency yeah. is more important. You know, I, I should start speaking first. My teacher can correct grammar later, right? So what is important is exposure to English and use of English. So with such learners, what you can do is uh, show them certain videos which can operate as samples of good speech. For example, uh, I show them uh, how, let's say, Vanchana introduced me today. He, he did a good job. Uh, we show that video and we say, what was good about this speech? Then people will say he was confident, his speech was organized, there was clarity, there was no ambiguity. So I should understand, first of all, what good speech is. All right. Second, now this student carries a lot of fear. So what you can suggest to him is give him first some reading practice. Let his tongue get used to the language. All right. Now with modern technology and every student has a phone in his hand, you can encourage the student to record his own reading so that let him listen uh, and understand whether if and whenever he speaks, whether people will be able to catch his pronunciation. Okay, next step is don't ask him, don't make him stand up directly in the class because he's scared of you as a teacher and he's scared of his peers, right? What I would suggest is uh, if you want him to speak tomorrow in the class, call him to your cabin today. Practice one-to-one -one because he carries fear. Let him have that confidence on you as a teacher. So you build up that confidence, give him practice. You say very good to him. His confidence enhances. Next step, you can ask, you can call one more friend of the student and ask them to rehearse a role play. And finally, the student will go, do a good job in the class. Now, there might be some errors in grammar. They cannot go away immediately, but I think that's fine. If he has started speaking, if he has fallen in love with English, if I can say that, uh, you know, that will help him to remove his fear. And slowly, once he develops confidence, he develops interest in language, now you can uh, work on his grammar. All right. Do you agree with me? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor. Because such such students need some personal attention, right? Which and therefore I said in my previous section session that a teacher has to play role of uh, an effective psychologist. We we have to understand uh, how their mind functions, how do they think, and we have to have give that support to our students. Okay. Uh, okay, ma'am. Well, any other questions? <clears throat> it's tough a question. Not yet now, right? So maybe... But I'm happy. But I'm happy that they're all smiling even at five in the <laughs> evening, according to Thai time. Uh, you have been wonderful audience, uh, very participative, and thank you so much for uh, your responses throughout uh, in the sessions. I'm sorry uh, for two, three minutes when there was some internet connectivity issue, uh, but I would say there was internet connectivity issue, but no issue at all with our connections in ELLT today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Akarapon, for uh, inviting me, uh, you, every batch is a good batch, I think, at Buriram uh, Rajput University. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Kampi, once again for inviting me. And uh, I wish all the participants a very best of luck uh, in their ELT research. Uh, I, I feel that uh, research in ELT, because, you know, we always say teachers make the nations and teachers make all jobs possible, right? So uh, I think we all have a great responsibility and we have become teachers because we are passionate about teaching. So uh, wish you a very best of luck to complete your research under the able guidance of Dr. Kampi, Dr. Akarapon and other uh, faculty members at the university. I hope you complete it soon. Uh, I also hope that you publish it soon so that uh, we get to read uh, what you have written in your research. And in this activity, as I said, I've shared my email ID with you. Uh, if I could be of any help to you, you're most welcome to write to me. Uh, I promise that I will reply to your email. 
Uh, so wish you all the very best of luck. Uh, stay happy. And I hope uh, I get to meet you sometimes in India. Maybe you'll come for an ELT conference or whatever. Uh, or I come to Myanmar or Thailand. So I hope to be in touch. And uh, it was lovely interacting with you as always. As always, because uh, the two stalwarts here, Dr. Akharopon and Dr. Kampi, they are they are, are so very enthusiastic about making students um, understand the subject matter well. So thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Okay, to conclude special lecture of um, Professor Dr. Maturishida Gokhale uh, from uh, Fokusan College, Pune, uh, Maharashtra, uh, India, okay, on linguistics, leading to TEFL, TESO, and ELT theory and practice on uh, to research. We've got um, many useful information to do our research, like uh, we've known the meaning of um, teaching and learning. We've got the character of effective teaching, uh, uh, prominent theory of learning, uh, language learning. And we've got examples of many tasks that we can adapt to in our, our early search in many fields like word for me, right? for grammar, reading, writing, and speaking, things like that, and any kind of skill that can develop in the future for our research. Uh, next, um, before we end this section today, now we have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Atarpon with us, so may I uh, have an honor to uh, an honor as a associate professor, Dr. Akarapon home to give the closing remarks, please. Can you turn on the microphone, please, sir. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I'm getting old and our Simon is coming to visit me. Uh, thank you, Mr. MC. So before ending our webinar, um, I would like to uh, use this sentence instead of um, let's eat taki, not let's eat grandma without punctuation <laughs> comma. Let's eat taki because I uh, didn't hear any question raised by Jan at this time. <laughs> so next time, Jan Taki, if you not ask any question, we would like to invite everybody. Let's eat taki without punctuation comma. <laughs> All right, taki, taki, taki. So. Uh, even if we spend uh, many hours from, uh, from from the afternoon until now, but you're still energetic, all right? And I'm very certain that what were spoken by and delivered by Professor Matuli today is very applicable. You can apply it uh, to your current studies and something unclear, she is still uh, very kind to all of you giving you email address. So if you have any questions relevant to English, please feel free to ask her directly. Uh, English problem, linguistic problem, ask Professor Matuli. Money problem, ask Dr. Kampi, all right? Don't ask me. <laughs> you can ask Dr. Kampi directly, all right? I've been to uh, Pune University last, I think last five years, I met Professor Matuli there. Uh, Professor Matuli and Dr. Aisho uh, uh, organized annually international conference in India. So if we are lucky enough, we will come to visit her in person once again uh, in the future. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. waiting I'm waiting for your visit to India. I hope you come soon. Yes, uh, we, we, we are so hoping to have you with us in person in the near future. Now sure. situation of COVID-19 pandemic is getting better. So yes. uh, all of you, if you would like to see and meet Professor Batuli in person at the U campus. Raise your hand. Yes. Uh, yeah, we would like to see, <laughs> see you very soon in person, Professor Batuli. Thank, Thank you. So once again, our uh, last but least on behalf of BIU, on behalf of Hillsock faculty, and also PhD in the OT program, we would like to express our sincere thanks for your very insightful talk today. We highly hope to have you with us again, both uh, online and on site in the near future in the near sure. future. Please uh, stay healthy and keep in touch with us. All right, at this auspicious moment, I would like to uh, declare the webinar officially closed. Thank you very so much. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, may, Bye -bye. may we have uh, a group photo again because yeah, sure. someone said that she doesn't <laughs> beautiful enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. keep smiling, keep smiling.
Once again, <laughs> one, two, three. Let me keep the first picture. Okay, the second one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank How you. to say bye bye in 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 Hindi? In Hindi, how to say? It is just like namaskar. Oh, namaskar, namaskar. Yes. Uh, what about and Chinese I, language? Chinese, how to say bye bye? And I think in Thai it is kapun kap. Kapun oh, kap for women and kapun kap for okay. men. Yes. Oh, okay. Chinese language, how to say bye bye? Jie jie. Jie jie. And 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 Burmese language. <laughs> how to say bye bye? Tata, tata. Ah, tata, tata, tata. Okay, <laughs> namaste. Interestingly, yeah. interestingly, in my language, in my mother tongue, Marathi, we uh -huh. also say tata. We also oh, say tata. tata. Yeah, tata, yeah, similar to Burmese yes. language. Yes. I think uh, maybe in, in the future, we might uh, co-conduct the research relevant to a company study. I, I think uh, this can yeah. become a topic for your future conference. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I don't have uh, Patanana <laughs> uh, Sovereign Trust in social linguistic. Yes. So we might we might join in conduct co-conducting research relevant to this. Sure. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Take Dr. Care. Karapon. In yeah, spite of your time. busy schedule, you are here today. Yeah, thank yes, you so thank much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.